Hey, how y'all doing today? So we're gonna jump right into this Married to Medicine review and let me, let me show you what, the, what I got. I got some notes, bitch, okay? I heard you, okay? Uh, so we're gonna get started. Congratulations, Toya and Eugene. It, the show opened with you guys at your house and they've made some progress and you guys had the champagne and all of that. And I know we seemed like a bunch of haters last week, but we really do as supporters of you guys want you guys to make better decisions. However, having said that, congratulations, because this is what you decided to do. And so now we can only hope the best for you guys in your journey. Moving on. Uh, then we switched to Heavenly being downtown Miami. Uh, with Jackie and Dr. Simone. And I think this episode really taught us a lot about Heavenly. I don't know if anybody really um, was processing some of the hidden gems that were going on here. And I think that Heavenly really is, at the core of her, a very good person. We learned a lot about her childhood and how she was brought up. Let me tell you something. That Heavenly, though, she's a shady, shady heifer in her uh, confessional. Talking about Jackie need the Botox all over her goddamn face like that. Now, Heavenly, that wasn't right. You know what I'm saying? Because I get the Botox. Okay, I get the Botox. And I be thinking my shit is working. And y'all probably be sitting back talking about that. Them eyes is crunchy. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> but don't do that, Heavenly. Um... Because people could tell you some things that you need and you wouldn't like it. You know what I'm saying? So there you go with that. But I think that Heavenly is a good person. And uh, we did find out a lot about her childhood. Let me go to my notes. Okay, let me go to my notes. Um, Heavenly, because uh, I'm trying to go in order, but I like to talk when my thoughts come. I do have the notes, but I'm going to talk on Heavenly so that we get Heavenly out the way. Uh, this whole episode was her. We saw her... Um, go back to her childhood home. And then when we, were, when we were there with her, I felt like I was there with her, you know, and she's talking about her room and how it didn't have any windows and how she didn't go outside and how she didn't walk this far down the block and that far down. I said, well, bitch, you was in solitary confinement. You know what I'm saying? You didn't have no friends. You didn't have no light and you was in a square box. That's solitary. Your mama raised you in solitary confinement and that's unfortunate. But then Heavenly has a breakdown and a panic attack because she realizes for the first time that this is the house that her father died in. And so she's whispering it. And I said, thank you, Lord, that Heavenly just acknowledges one time that she don't need to talk loud and she don't need to tell what she know uh, to the people that need to know it sometimes. You know what I mean? Like keep some shit to yourself. And she realized that because, girl, don't you come visit me. Ask to visit my house. Okay, production done called me and asked me, can you come back to your childhood home? You coming all up in my place and they're going to tell me somebody died. Now I got to put my shit on the market after you left. You done changed my life forever. So I'm glad Heavenly kept that little tidbit of information to herself. However, he is going to see it. So uh, it may potentially be on the market now. You know, um, but it was... It was interesting to see and to find all of that out about Heavenly because they Heavenly because they had me. They had me. I said, poor baby. So she really doesn't know or didn't learn at a young age, which are the formidable years, how to interact with others in a healthy way. And it, at the risk of sounding platitudinous, um, you know, we... We are products of our environment, you know, and our experiences kind of mold and shape us. And so if that was her childhood, then that definitely shed some light onto how she interacts with people as an adult. <clears throat> I'm the same way. I uh, went through a lot of things in my life. And so I was very defensive all the time and I lashed out because that's what I used as a defense mechanism. And it's taken me time, even in my 48 years, everybody's still growing and learning to kind of hone in on what was the cause and how to um, manage those triggers and those responses within myself. And so I'm sure that we will see a change in Heavenly. Now they did, you know, Heavenly had painted such a picture and I was like, oh my goodness, poor baby. And then they show us her goddamn friends. So I was like, bitch, you either had some or you didn't. You know what I'm saying? But she had her friends there and, um, you know, they, they said this is the heavenly that they've always known. 
Okay. And so I, I, I find solace in that because, you know, some people puts on for the camera. Some people puts on for TV. Okay. And it was good to just say, well, heavenly been like that with everybody. Cause that's how I feel like, like, like that about myself. Like I'm the same way with everybody all the time, the executive to the, to the, uh, you know, the person that work at Popeye's, you know what I'm saying? I'm the same. Now I might fine tune my tone or my delivery, but for the most part, I'm always going to be just very honest and very direct and comical at times and serious at times, but I'm always the same person. So it was good to see that Heavenly was, um, the same, uh, but Heavenly, you was drinking that Mad Dog 2020, that Thunderbird. You was out in them streets with your gold chains. We seen you. You know, so now when you try to... I ain't going to even say that. I ain't even going to put that on Helen. I was going to say when she try to act all high post. Because she don't. She still got a little hood and a little street in her. It, and it comes out on every episode. So we see we see that. But the, the friends did kind of excuse her behavior. Because they said that's the heavenly that they've always known. And Dr. Jackie, who we... Love will step in and put her uh, two cents in it that we all love because it usually makes sense. Um, said, well, now as adults, as the mature women that we are, uh, hopefully she will make some adjustments because you just can't do that now. <laughs> Don't you just love Dr. Jackie? <laughs> she be giving you she be giving you that elm tree shade not willow tree not weeping willow tree shade but it, it's a little shady at times but she snuck that right on in there and she's right okay her two cents made sense uh you know as as an adult uh older mature woman certain things you cannot address that way and then we saw heavenly acknowledge that yes now she is going to be cognizant of her mouth and make adjustments when necessary. Yay, won't he do it? Um, next up, we, oh, let me just touch on some of these parts. I'm trying to peruse these notes, but I ain't got my glasses on. Uh, the Golden Girls comment, y'all was affected. And I know how you feel, because when they called us the Golden Girls, I was bothered, okay? Because that, that y'all repeated that at least a good two, three times. So I said that, that, that they, they was affected by that. that. That hurt their feelings a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But let me just put it into perspective for you. If somebody can actually consider you a Golden Girl, that means that you have been here a long time. And let me tell you what I do know. Somebody didn't wake up. Somebody's no longer here. Somebody you can't even call a golden girl. So if you being called a golden girl, that means God still wants you here and he still has work for you to do and he still has a purpose for your life and you are still growing. Not growing old, growing. That's what I had to tell myself to get through it, child. Okay, so I had to run and go do something. So, yeah, jump cut. I'm back now. <laughs> uh, okay, so Married to Medicine um, left off with the Golden Girls comment. Uh, Jackie was about to die in that cigar shop. Well, she, I knew that wasn't going to go well. I said, why didn't take Jackie to a good cigar shop? You know, but I guess that's what Heavenly wanted to do when it was her trip. So, you subject to whatever the hell they want to do. Quad getting together with her friends. Uh... This is the Quad and Friends show. Quad, because you got every, you talking to everybody about this situation, but the ladies on the show, which is what we care about. Now, although I love me some Selena Johnson, you know, you had this uh, sister circle ladies up there and that was cute, but now you done brought Mark and Abigail. And although Abigail is cute and Mark is fine, we don't care what they think about the situation. I need to know what, uh, Dr. Jackie think, Dr. Simone's advice, uh, Heavenly's advice, I'm Mariah, what she want to throw in uh, to the pot. That's who we want to hit, Contessa. What do they have to say and how can they advise and counsel because that's who we care about. So can you start having more scenes with them? Aiden was so cute in his confessional because, you know, a happy wife is a happy life because Mariah tried to throw that little slug at Heavenly talking about the girlfriend was ugly and kind of reminded her of Heavenly. And Aiden was like, I'm not about to do this with you. Okay. She was in between both of y'all. She was in between both of y'all. Because 
I might still see that lady. That lady might be a patient of mine. That lady might come to the facilities where I work. So I'm not just going to say this lady's ugly just because you want me to. And so uh, I thought that was cute. And Aiden's hairline is looking good because I'd heard he had got the, the, the little hair replacement surgery and there were some issues with that, but it looks good, Aiden. And Mariah's daughter, precious 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 just really like mariah's daughter and um uh the advice that they've given her about the boys and all of that stuff that's cute i like to see that because i went through that with my girls you know i was a little more open and in your face with my daughters but uh that's that's so cute i like to see that okay then we get on to Miss Contessa, and uh, she's up, and she's cooking before the surgery. She's making the baby's breakfast. Them babies be getting up early. Them, ba them babies is like, I'm not fucking hungry. Okay, I don't, I'm not ready to eat right now. I'd like to get a good 30 more minutes. Uh, but she's cooking before surgery, and that really is a testament to her being the matriarch of her immediate family and just still doing for everybody else. Um, it was a little nervous energy involved there as well, just trying to keep busy and keep your mind off of the surgery. I get it. Uh, but then she went on in the in the moment and, and kind of downplayed her surgery and said that she was just going to the doctor, that she had a doctor's visit. And I know that you guys hate when I do this. And I'm gonna apologize in advance. Because there is no manual for parenting. I'm clear on that. I acknowledge that. However, I said that to say this. I still would like for you guys to have a little more honesty with your children. God forbid, hypothetically speaking, something went wrong with this surgery. You done told the kids you just going in for a doctor's visit. Now they scared of the doctor for their whole entire life. Baby girl already don't want to go to heaven. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she, she's not ready to die. You know, and, and um, then you're going to have a baby scared of the doctors. But uh, I think that um, I, I would like to see a little more honesty with the children. And you didn't have to tell them all of the details but i i wish you had not have played it down as much as you had by saying it was a simple doctor's visit um but here but all that aside because uh, it's not a joking matter i want to say that i admire your bravery your husband scott is super super supportive i like to see that uh on tv the, that type of relationship with black couples uh, with couples in general, I don't want to limit it to black couples, with couples with love, with marriage in general. I like to see that. Um, and uh, you just, you just, you, you, you just all of that in a bag of chips. I couldn't even, I don't even know the words that I really want to say, but I, I really admire your bravery because, you know, even they showed a flashback of Dr. Jackie saying that, it's not recommended. Um, you know, there is no guarantees, of course, with anything. And, uh, you know, even your other doctor said that, that you know, this, this doesn't definitely stifle the situation or combat this issue. It is a big decision and step that you're taking, uh, but, but this doesn't mean that it minimizes your chances either. So um, the fact that you're... Uh, stepping out and uh going through with this that is definitely an act of bravery and uh, i commend you for that simone snoring that's tammy roman because i can sleep anywhere okay uh i but i put snuggie over my head because i know that my mouth is going to be open now i know that they were in miami and she didn't have anything to put over her head but that mouth was wide open okay and um you was getting it simone you tired you work hard we get it we understand uh and i and and, and it was just funny to me it was funny to me because you uh you was calling all them damn cows from everywhere they exist um i think that's it i think that's it that's all the notes i took so that must have been all that stuck out to me because uh, we already done covered heavenly with her. Yeah, so we did everything. So that's the married to 
medicine, 